We save others and ourselves from ourselves. I'll just be honest with you. The most destructive person in my life is me. I push myself in ways that no one would ever push me. I push myself in ways I would never push my children. Never. I tend to be my own Pharaoh. Slave driver, slave driver, slave driver, slave driver, slave. How many of you are like that? Now, some of you are not like that. But how many of you are like me? You're type A driver doer. How many of you are like that? Here's the big idea. If you don't take a break, you'll just break. If you don't take a Sabbath voluntarily, you'll take a Sabbath involuntarily. We call it stress, depression, ulcer, burnout, heart attack, hospitalization. The question is not, are you gonna stop? The question is, are you gonna stop joyfully or painfully? That's the question. And you can drive yourself. And when you drive yourself, you drive everybody in your world. If you're a parent, you're gonna drive your kids. Uh, if you're an employer, you're gonna drive your employees. That everybody's gonna have to march along to death to keep up with you. Man, I've learned this the hard way. And so we say, well, I'm glad you've learned it. Still learning it. We always put the hypocrites up front so they're good illustrations, right? On this one, I've had blown adrenal glands. I've had major fatigue. I've had an intestinal ulcer. I have, I have really fried myself out. Sometimes we need to be saved from ourselves. And some of you are not as gracious or loving or wise or merciful as God, your heavenly father. And you would be driving and the father would say, sit down, take a nap. I didn't tell you to do that. Let somebody else figure it out or let me take care of it. God tends to be more gracious to some of us than we are to ourselves. And I've failed at this and I'm still working at this. And there are times I get this wrong and I go backward. And for those of you who are like me, it's something to constantly be aware of and constantly be repenting of because all of a sudden productivity becomes idolatry. I could get more done. And God says, well, one of the things that's most important to me is time with you. Amen. See, and, and you think about this. I mean, I have five kids. I love them with all my heart. And what I don't want them to just do is all their chores. I want them to get time with me. All right, one of my highlights every day lately, I lay on the couch, Gideon and Alexi, the two younger ones, they lay on top of me for upwards of an hour. Okay. Some of the other kids are pretty big, so they gotta sit next to me, all right? <laughs> Otherwise they knock the wind out of me. But I would be very discouraged, I'd be very grieved and saddened if my children never came and sat with me. Well, dad, I gotta do the dishes, now I gotta pull weeds, now I gotta do homework, now I'm gonna wash the car, now I gotta clean the garage, now I gotta, 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 gotta. No, I, I'm your dad. I, you do need to do your chores, you do need to do your homework, but you also need to spend time with your dad because it's good for you. And your dad loves you. Your dad wants to spend time with you. Dad wants to make memories with you. And I want you to hear this, not in terms of a lawgiver giving a law, but a father giving wise counsel to children. A dad who's looking at his kids and it's like, you kids are, you gonna, you're gonna fry yourself out? Come sit on the couch with dad. We don't have time. No, trust me, you do, you do. It's saving yourself from yourself. 